Welcome to Chicago Debates Demo Debate. In this debate, we will have our program officers um, debating against each other. On the negative, we have myself, Flynn, and Victoria. On the affirmative, we have Aisha and Jasmine. The topic this year is criminal justice. The affirmative will be advocating for eliminating uh, cash or money bail. The negative will be arguing uh, federalism disadvantage as well as several arguments on the case. Jasmine will be giving the first affirmative constructive and that will require three pieces of paper to flow or to take notes. I will turn it over to Jasmine. Pushing start now. Okay. Contention one is inherency. Pre-trial detention has increased five-fold since 1970. For-profit bail bond companies are driving this increase, impacting poor communities the most. Degard and Swavoli in 19. The pre-trial population has increased from 82,922 people in 1970 to 441,790 in 2015. A significant driver of the growing number of people in jail awaiting trial has been a paradigm shift toward financial conditions of pre-trial release. Nearly all of that increase was due to greater use of commercial bonds. If people do not have the financial resources to pay bail or bond fees, they remain in custody. Members of the poorest communities are harmed most profoundly, despite constitutional prohibitions on punishing people for their poverty. Thus, the plan. The United States federal government should enact substantial criminal justice reform in the United States by eliminating money bail. Contention two is rights. Money bail is a biased system that discriminates on the basis of race and economic class. Doyle, 2019. Money bail discriminates against low-income people through bond amounts that are burdensome or unaffordable. Money bail disproportionately harms Black and Latinx defendants. Money bail is imposed more on Black defendants and receive higher bail amounts than white defendants. Next, money bail schemes violate constitutional protections afforded by the 14th Amendment. Doyle, 19. The Supreme Court has held that the Constitution prohibits states from depriving individuals of their liberty on the basis of wealth. Judges must consider a, a defendant's ability to pay and the availability of alternative punishments before incarcerating the defendant on the basis of unpaid fines. A bail scheme violates the 14th Amendment. Next, undermining the rule of law destroys U.S. leadership, also called hegemony. Schmidt in 2018. Liberal hegemony refers to rule regime-based order created by a leading state. Order is also established and maintained through the access of power by the leading state. Which money is manifest essentially as rule-based leadership. The maintenance of liberal international order, as well as its legitimacy, is contingent upon the hegemon abiding by the rules and institutions that it helps to create in the first place. Next, a strong U.S. hegemony prevents global war. Calzadad in 2011. If U.S. policymakers fail to act and other powers continue to grow, a new international order will emerge. American re-entrenchment could have devastating consequences. Regional powers could rearm to balance against emerging threats. There would be a heightened possibility of armed races, miscalculation, or other crises spiraling into all-out conflict. Contention three is economy. Maintaining pretrial detention is an enormous cost to taxpayers. The true economic cost of the system is close to $140 billion a year. Pretrial Justice Institute 2017. Taxpayers spent $380 million per day to jail people who are awaiting trial. Annually, this $14, billion, this $14 billion is used to detain people who are mostly low risk. The true cost of existing money-based pretrial systems is closer to $140 billion per year. Intake costs for booking, creating records, medical screenings, and uniforms exceeds $800, even if the person is released within the hour. Next, pretrial incarceration traps people in poverty, loss of jobs, housing, and children. Coalition to End Money Bond 2019. Pretrial incarceration causes people to lose their jobs, housing, and even custody of their children. The individuals and communities harmed by these practices are disproportionately black, brown, and impoverished. We know the solution to poverty and racial disparities is investment in our communities, not increased spending on criminalization and incarceration. Next, economic inequality and poverty slow the entire economy and unravels political stability. Ingram signing a UN study 2020. The UN report notes that unequal societies grow more slowly and are less successful at sustaining economic growth. The net result has been a massive transfer of wealth and power from the poor and the middle class to those at the top. Trust in those institutions declined as the U.S. in the U.S. The lack of trust creates a vacuum for authoritarian and native regimes to take root. Next, economic decline leads to global war. Tenzin in 2015. Interdependence raises the cost of conflict for all sides and may generate tensions leading to trade wars among interdependent states that in turn increase the risk of military conflict. 
the greatest risk is that changes in the world economy alter circumstances in ways that render interstate peace more precarious. If China and the U.S. fail to rebalance their financial relations, the trade war could result. This could have unforeseen consequences in the field of security. Contention four is solvency. Money bill is not necessary to ensure defendants reappear for trial. Cook County proves that the only way to fix the injustice of bail is through eliminating money bail. Doyle, 2019. Most defendants who are released from custody pending trial will reappear for their court dates without any financial incentives. Many of those who missed a court appearance do so for mundane reasons. High reappearance rates can be achieved through pretrial releases and thoughtful pretrial services, such as automated court reminders. Rather than eliminating money bail, some jurisdictions have attempted to forbid judges from imposing unaffordable bail. But so long as money bail remains a possible condition of release, some judges may continue to illegally detain people on unaffordable bonds. This exact problem emerged in Cook County, Illinois, after initially promising reforms. The only foolproof way to end illegal detention on unaffordable bail is the elimination of money bail. Open for cross-ups. Beautiful. So that will be me as the second negative speaker. Um, are you ready for cross-ex? Perfect, all right, starting the time now. What is the alternative to cash bail? Yeah, so there can be many different alternatives to cash bail according to our data for Progress 2019 card. One example could be pretrial releases. Um, so yeah, that could be an alternative. All right, so in that system, how do they decide who is pre who is detained pretrial? I assume they don't release everyone. So how do they make that decision? Um, yeah, so individualized hearings per case by case um, basis, case by case person, um, since each case is unique and different, um, would be how they would determine that. Perfect. Thank you. Um, in your evidence, you cite some examples of cash bail reform. At what level of government have these changes taken place in the past? Um, so our Doyle 2019 card talks about the Supreme Court ruling on judges evaluating wealth, um, how you have to evaluate that before determin determining a punishment. And then our solvency Doyle 2019 card referenced state examples of where, um, how judges were kind of evaluating, not evaluating based on wealth and how that became a problem. So we referenced both the federal level and the state level. Yeah, thank you. Um, how does the affirmative address racial disparities um, in areas of the criminal justice system, such as arrest and policing? Yeah. So if we took the $140 billion a year it costs our taxpayers to uphold the current system in place, we could invest that money in communities and schools and parks so there wouldn't be a need for policing and arrest that we see happening in predominantly black and brown communities. And that's our Coalition to End Money Bond 2019 card. Thank you. I will now be giving the first negative constructive. Um, you will need the three pieces of paper you use to take notes or flow the first affirmative constructive in addition to a new piece of paper. So the order is one off case, the federalism disadvantage, and then the rights advantage, then the economy advantage, and then solvency. Okay, is everyone ready? Okay. First is the federalism disadvantage. Uniqueness, coronavirus response has ushered in a new and lasting wave of federalism and state innovation. <clears throat> Gersel 20, the states have emerged in the pandemic. States are creating a new federalism, pushing back against Washington. States launch novel social and economic experiments. States have started to show America how it might find its way to a progressive future. Link, criminal justice is an important area of state authority. Those same principles are important to the COVID-19 pandemic. You and Delahunty 20. As a constitutional and historical matter, criminal law enforcement lies with state governors. The same principles of federalism that divide governmental authority here also applied to the pandemic. States have responsibility for protecting public health and safety. Internal link, effective COVID response is necessary for the economy, Vetalingam 20. Lifting a lockdown creates economic hazards. Epi models suggest there are large economic benefits to slowing the spread of COVID-19. The key is to reduce resurgence by better targeting of preventative measures. And cross-apply their Tonneson evidence. Economic collapse causes global war. Now, on to the case. 
go to the rights advantage or your rights flow. First is that money bail does not hurt the rule of law. Their internal link is negative evidence because it says that the Supreme Court has decided money bail does not violate the Constitution. And money bail is the solution for balancing the rights of the accused and the public. This important balance is protected by the Constitution. Siebler and Sneed, 17. Bail emerged to balance the general right of defendants to pretrial freedom with the need of society to protect against flight and ensure punishment. The Supreme Court has repeatedly rejected constitutional challenges to the extent that arguments can be made against its use today. They are not legal or constitutional. And there are many alternative causes to a decline in US leadership or hegemony. The Trump presidency and our military presence are far more important, which means that the AFS effect is negligible. Domestic criminal justice policy is not even on the radar of other countries when considering US military leadership. And eliminating cash bail threatens public safety and prevents victims from being witnesses and helping investigations. Shea 20. These are not offenders who should be freed. Judges should, should assess their risk to public safety. Violent criminals are being returned to the community and will know the names of their accusers and where to find them. The likely outcome will be many fewer people coming forward to help the police. Their Schmidt evidence says that hegemony is dependent on the U.S. abiding by rules it created. Even if cash bail is unequal, it is a rule that the U.S. has created, which means it does not hurt the rule of law. And hegemony does not prevent wars. Mearsheimer, 18. The costs of hegemony begin with endless wars. A powerful state prone to fighting war after war increases instability. They interfere in the politics of other countries. The U.S. has failed in almost all of these conflicts. Now the economy advantage your economy flow. The AF can't solve inequalities. A sub point, the AF doesn't change arrest or conviction rates. B, many other causes of inequality outside of the criminal justice system. Redlining, tax loopholes, predatory loans, lack of labor protections, insufficient social safety net, etc., all contribute far more to U.S. economic inequality. And cash bail is good for taxpayers, Armstrong 18. The elimination of bail will cost the state hundreds of millions of dollars. It's not just about jails, but the cost of investigative work or apprehending defendants who fail to show up in court. And economic inequality has skyrocketed since the 1980s. There's no risk of escalation to war. And cash bail is an equalizer. The system takes into account consideration, the system takes into account the ability to pay. Kennedy 16. Cash bail is the great equalizer. Commissioners already take into account the severity of the crime and the defendant's history and ability to pay. The law already affords defendants the right to appeal excessive bail. Now solvency or your solvency flow. Eliminating bail does not solve the structural issues that the affirmative claims. The, the replacement is far worse. Carlisle 18. Minimizing cash bail perpetuates racial disparities. The data to predict a person's risk could be influenced by structural racism. Any bias is, re is replicated by the algor algorithms with the veneer of objectivity. You have racial profiling 2.0. And ending cash bail leads to more pretrial detention, Tabarrok 18. Money bail lets the judge release more people. When the public realizes that judges are releasing defendants who commit crimes, there will be a backlash, This is already evident in Chicago. The unintended consequence may be that more people are held until trial with no possibility of release. Okay, ready for cross-ex? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can you tell me what federalism is exactly? Yeah, federalism is the idea that there is a division of power between the federal and state governments and that states should be protected in terms of having their rights in order to uh, increase local innovation and in the way that states can tailor their responses to the specific needs of their populations. Thank you. Uh, why is the coronavirus response um, specifically key to a lasting wave of federalism? Yeah, our evidence is really good on this point and indicates that because the federal government has done such a poor job responding to the pandemic, that states are really pushing back against federal government control in this particular area. That this is a unique and novel way that states are kind of forced to come up with their own local solutions in order to treat a very rapidly changing threat like a pandemic. Thank you. 
Um, and if effective code responses are coming from the states, doesn't that mean that health policymaking will look different from state to state? Yes, health policymaking will look different from state to state. Our argument is that that's important for states to be able to respond because they know best the populations that they are um, in charge of or have authority over. And so they're more able to rapidly respond to changing conditions. Thank you. So now we're going to have the second affirmative constructive um, and the order is your federalism dissent flow, the rights flow, the econ flow, and then solvency. Everyone ready? Perfect. Non-unique, the politics of a Trump presidency means federalism is dead. It's about the power of the base. States politics are reactionary, not independent. Gawthorpe 2020. Rather than seeing it as his role to work with the states to develop a national plan, Trump stating that he took no responsibility for the virus. Much of the explanation can be found in the power of partisanship and the nationalization of state politics. The results have been an inversion of what the founders intended with some states lavishly following federal dictate in flagrant disregard of local needs. These developments suggest that federalism has become another casualty of a president unprecedented in his disregard for everything which truly makes America great. Next, no link. Cash bail has long been regulated and controlled by the federal government. Skarinski, 2014. In 1966, Congress enacted the first federal guidelines for setting bail with the goal of preventing the unnecessary detention of indigent defendants. Under the Comprehensive Crime Control Act of 1984, courts were authorized to also consider whether a defendant might pose a danger to the community when determining whether to order pretrial release. No internal link. The flexibility afforded to states under federalism means responses that further entrench health inequalities. Gordon et al. 2020. State flexibility in health policymaking has meant that certain communities, such as poor African American families in the Deep South, have fewer resources over the long term and suffer entrenched health disparities. Our public health federalism is questionably adequate under the best of circumstances. During an emergency, the failures of federalism come into sharp relief, forcing us to reconsider one of the most deeply held American beliefs that decisions made closer to home are inherently better. On to rights. Extend Doyle 19 from the 1AC. Cash bail is unconstitutional. By locking people up simply because they cannot afford the bond amount, it violates the prohibition of excessive bail amounts. This is not negative evidence since jurisdictions across the country still use excessive bail to target poor black and brown people. Next, money bail violates multiple constitutional rights. ACLU no date. After an arrest, wrongful or not, a person's ability to leave jail and return home to fight the charges depends on money. The money bail system has morphed into widespread wealth-based incarceration. Current bail practices are unconstitutional in violating due process rights and equal protection under, under the 14th Amendment, the prohibition against excessive bail in the 8th Amendment, and the right to a speedy trial guaranteed by the 6th Amendment. Next, setting cash bail does not have an effect on court appearances, but still continues as to be used as discriminatory practice. While Cart 19. The elimination of cash bail for dozens of offenses in Philadelphia has zero effect on court appearance rates, and it's poor black and brown people who are more likely to bear these costs. Race influences how much bail is set, severity of charges, and lengths of sentences with black and Latino people often being penalized at higher rates than whites. Next, defendants who face pretrial detention have worse outcomes in their cases. The psychological trauma is devastating. On your queer 19, pretrial detention has dramatically negative effects on the outcome of a defendant's case. Those who are held pretrial are four times more likely to be sentenced to prison than defendants released prior to trial. Pretrial detainees are also likely to make hurried decisions to plead guilty to a lower charge to spend less time behind bars rather than chancing a higher charge and longer sentence at trial. Extend Schmidt 18, maintaining our legitimacy and leadership is reliant on upholding law and order, and this is um, key to prevent a global arms race and a global war. On to economy. Cash bail is the first step in making substantial change when it comes to criminal justice reform. Abolishing cash bail means more money can go back into communities and there will be lower incarceration rates since those detained pretrial are more likely to take plea bargains. And extend law cart 19. Cash bail does not have an effect on court appearances. This does not mean taxpayers are paying more. Their only evidence in support of cash bail comes from a bail bondsman. Of course, they support the system. They're the only ones benefiting and extend pretrial justice 17 evidence. Taxpayers spend about $140 billion, billion on just keeping people detained pretrial. And our coalition to end money bond evidence says that pretrial incarceration causes people to lose jobs, housing, and even family. This traps people in poverty. Extend Ingram and um, Tennyson. The UN states that social inequalities undermine political and economic 
instability. And with this economic instability, this will lead to global war, which ha could have potentially uh, unforeseen circumstances like the use of nuclear weapons. On to solvency. Extend Doyle 19. Eliminating cash bail is the only way to fix the injustices of the money bail system. D.C. and Santa Clara County proved that pretrial services ensure that people attend their court dates. Next, ending cash bail is effective. D.C. proves national legislation is needed to create a fairer and effective system. Only the federal government can create a national pretrial reporting program, which will make reform the most effective. Data for Progress 19. Several states have enacted broad reform to the pretrial detention systems in the last several years, including New Jersey, California, and New Mexico, and none allow a person to be held only based on their inability to pay. Reforms have been enormously successful. D.C. has released 94% of people charged with crimes, of whom just 1% are rearrested for a violent offense. The End Money Bill Act will create fairer and more effective systems than any other proposal. Thank you. I will now be starting cross-examination. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. First is, how does the app solve inequality for people affected by cash bail? People of color are still going to be arrested and sentenced disproportionately, and they're still structurally excluded from economic mobility due to racism in hiring, pay disparities, et cetera. Right. So mass incarceration is one of the biggest sources of inequality, um, especially for people of color and poor communities. So solving for cash bail is the first step in creating any mean meaningful criminal justice reform. Um, so if you look to our inherency evidence, there are almost half a million people that are detained pre-trial just because they can't afford to pay the bond amount. Thank you. Your internal link to the economy says that all economic inequality is what would result in a war. Even if the app does some, solve some inequal, economic inequality for a small percentage of people, how does changing cash bail solve economic inequality for the vast majority of people who aren't involved in the criminal justice system? Right. Um, so like I mentioned, this is not just a small percentage of people. Um, mass incarceration is a huge issue. The U.S. has the highest incarceration rate in the world. And um, things like cash bail and pretrial detention affect people because when they're locked up, they lose their jobs, they lose housing. So these are other factors that contribute to, um, you know, the inequality that cash bail produces by locking people up as well. All right. Uh, thank you. Next time. All right, I will be um, doing the two and C. Um, my partner will take the disadvantage in her one and R. So I will be covering the rights advantage, the economy advantage, and the solvency contention. All right, you set my timer. All right, we're ready here. All right, we're ready. Beautiful. First, on the rights advantage. They say cash bail violates constitutional rights, but extend our Schreiber and Sneed and 17 evidence. The Supreme Court has ruled that cash bail is constitutional, and they are the ultimate authority, not the ACLU. And the alternative is worse. The risk assessments that we place money bail are unconstitutional under the Equal Protection Clause. From Harvard Law Review in 2019, the new California pretrial detention law is unconstitutional under the Equal Protection Clause. SB 10 provides leeway for risk assessment tools to include race and gender data, or to use location as a proxy for race, and to quantify individuals' risk level based on general life statistics related to identity and location, rather than criminal conduct. As a result, the system will permit the fundamental right to bodily integrity to be allocated inequitably for similar situated people. And people also have a right to safety. And extend our she in 2020 evidence that says that eliminating cash bail releases dangerous criminals and hinders police investigation. And on the impact, extend our Mir 2018 evidence. He is a professor of political science at UChicago and has studied U.S. hegemony and leadership for decades. This empirical evidence proves that U.S. hegemony does not prevent war. If anything, it leads to more war. 
there, Khalil Azad in 2011, evidence was written nine years ago. The landscape of U.S. leadership has changed since then. It does not take into account a world of Trump presidency and the changes in U.S. foreign policy. Other countries care more about our response to coronavirus. They funding the WHO and NATO relations, and they do our domestic criminal uh, justice policies. And onto the economy advantage. Extend our Armstrong and 18 evidence. Eliminating cash bail would cost taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars in California alone. The risk taken by bondsmen would be pushed onto the taxpayer. And extend our Kennedy and 16 evidence from a fellow at the Maryland Public Policy Institute. Cash bail is a great equalizer. It takes into account the ability to pay, making it the most fair system. And eliminating cash bail and moving to risk-based assessment decision-making leads to increased pretrial detention based on race, a barrier in 18. Advocates are concerned that risk-based decision-making will lead to an increased rate of pretrial detention and continue or worsen racial disparities. Maryland reduced its reliance on cash bail. There are some early indications that Maryland's reform have led to an increase in pretrial detention. Bail reforms could potentially worsen racial disparities in the justice system. This means the affirmative can't solve the impact of economic inequality. The criminal justice system is unfair, and changing cash bail does not do enough to solve the economic inequality in the United States. Remember that alternative causes from the one and see, arrest, conviction rate, inefficient safety net, all mean the affirmative can't solve. And there's no risk of a war from economic inequality. We have seen no impact, despite increasing inequality for decades. And on to solvency. The affirmative team points to the examples of DC as an effective and fair system. However, when we look into the alternatives of cash bail, we see that these alternatives create a worse system. When cash bail is unlimited or greatly reduced, it has to be replaced with something. If judges are not setting bail amounts, there has to be a way to decide whether or not to detain someone pretrial. And that way is risk assessment. Our Carlisle 18 evidence quotes Vincent Sutherland, the executive director on the Center of Race and Equality and Law at the New York University Law School. The data quoting says, the data they use to predict a person's risk could be influenced by structural racism. As a result, any bias baked into the data is replicated by the algorithms with the veneer of scientific objectivity. A second piece of solemnity evidence from one and see is an article written by Alex Cherubark, a professor of economics at George Mason University, who found that eliminating bail caused more pretrial detention as people are held with no possibility of release. He reminds us that money, eliminating money bail is not a solution to the problem. And cross apply the very 18 evidence from the economy of contention. Cash bail in Maryland, cash bail reform in Maryland actually increased pretrial detention. As policymakers, we must think about the implications of the policies we propose and ask what the alternatives would look like. In the case of eliminating cash bail, it's not simply enough to point out that cash bail is a flawed system. We must ask ourselves what the alternative actually looks like. And as the negative, we have proven that the alternative is a worse system and the affirmative does not solve the harms of their case. Thank you. I'm now open for cross-examination. Just gonna get my timer ready. So you see that eliminating money bail is a public safety risk, um, mm -hmm. but the card from the one and C is written by a police commission commissioner commissioner. Wouldn't they say exactly this that um, you know it's a public safety risk and we can't eliminate cash bail? No. So the that's actually why we should look to this piece of evidence because. The police officer obviously cares about public safety and police investigations. Um, they don't get any like kickbacks or anything from a uh, cash bail. This is a like prison system. So all they care about is police investigations and really bringing safety and justice to the people because that is what they are sworn to do. Awesome. And how does eliminating cash bail cost taxpayers more? Um, so we cited that Taxpayers pay about $140 billion um, just in detaining people pretrial. So how would eliminating that cost us more? Yeah, so there's two ways that um, our arguments talk about. Uh, the first is that pretrial detention still exists. 
um, in some cases. So it's not, that's not the total cost that would be saved. And the second way is that the risk assessment programs that have to replace cash bail are also really expensive, especially in the upfront cost, because a lot of these places don't have these systems because they've relied on cash bail for so long. All right. And um, where in our evidence do we promote risk assessment tools? Um, so a lot of our evidence mm -hmm. talks about how just providing pretrial services ensures that people will, um, you know, attend their court dates. Yeah, and so those pre-trial services often include risk assessments such as Maryland and DC. So the examples you use, those are, that's what has replaced it. Um, so that would be what your evidence refers to as an effective system. That's time. Thank you. Uh, we are now in the middle of what's called the negative block. So the negative gives two speeches in a row. We're moving into the rebuttals. So this is the first negative rebuttal. <clears throat> I will be only speaking about the federalism disadvantage. So the only piece of paper you need right now is your federalism disadvantage flow. <clears throat> right. I'll begin with an overview. Because both sides agree economic decline causes nuclear war, the question of this debate is which team better prevents economic decline? The negative better prevents it for two reasons. A, no brink. Inequality has existed forever and has massively increased since the 1980s. There's no reason domestic inequality would escalate to international conflict. B sub point, time frame and magnitude. In the short term, data proves that coronavirus has decimated stock markets, employment, and investor confidence. It will get worse rapidly without adequate state response and will cause a global economic slowdown that destroys trade ties. The ass impact evidence says that trade is what's necessary to prevent war, not inequality. And Economic collapse turns their rights advantage. In order to maintain stability and security, rights will be sacrificed. Now, the line by line. They say non-unique. State innovation and federalism are surging as a result of COVID. Our evidence post-states and assumes theirs. Trump is trying to strong-arm state senators, but states are strongly pushing back against all federal directives and embracing this moment as a time to expand states' rights. That's the Gersel evidence. They say no link. However, History, multiple court rulings, and the Constitution prove that states have sovereign control over criminal justice. The Tenth Amendment explicitly reserves police powers to the state. That's our U evidence, and prefer this evidence. Their evidence only cites two bills which slightly changed bail 40 years ago, but the app is distinct and causes a huge shift in state power. It ends cash bail entirely, which takes all power out of the hands of the states. And money bail is constitutionally a state issue, gross 19. Bail is a uniquely local concern with deep constitutional roots. Ills of money-based bail requires reform on the state level. Now, they say that states will cause unequal health impacts, but states solve COVID best. They provide innovative health care at a local level that is able to adapt to the constantly shifting realities of the virus. Even if health disparities still exist at a local level, federal government control is worse in the context of COVID because Trump is actively trying to suppress scientifically backed public health responses. That's Gersel. All right. Okay, I will be giving the 1AR and the roadmap for this speech is gonna be the federalism flow the rights flow, the econ flow, and then the solvency flow. Start. Federalism DA. Extend our non-unique Guathrop 2020 evidence. With Trump as president, many state governors value their relationship with him above anything else. This means they will listen to him even over what's best for their local communities to please the president and what he wants for state. Next, extend our no link squarcy 2014 evidence. The negative doesn't have a link because cash bail has long been controlled by the federal government. Our evidence states in 1966, Congress enacted the first federal guidelines for setting bail. The negative evidence is generally about criminal justice overall, so prefer our evidence. 
Next, extend our no internal link cord in 2020 evidence. States do not solve COVID best because if states have the flexibility to dictate their health response, certain communities, specifically communities of color in rural states, will have fewer resources and have greater health disparities in the long run compared to communities of color in other states. Next is the impact. We cannot continue to let millions of people continue to be affected by mass incarceration. The risk of war continues to rise every day that goes by that we don't end money bail since it is an important step in beginning to fix economic inequality affected by vulnerable communities since money bail keeps communities in poverty. The AF solves this best. Next is the rights flow. Extend our Doyle 19 from the 1AC. The Supreme Court ruled the act of depriving an individual's liberty based on wealth keeps in place discriminatory practices based on race and economic class, which violates the due process rights and equal protection rights under the 14th Amendment. Next, they say eliminating cash bail releases dangerous criminals and hinders police investigations of crime, but extend our Lockhart 19 card from the 2AC. Poor black and brown people are the ones disproportionately affected by cash bail. Eliminating cash bail doesn't do anything for the criminals that are already on the streets. And there are also many other reasons police investigations are interrupted, such as time management, priority of crimes, and lack of oversight. Next is the impact. Extender Schmidt 18 card. Undermining the rule of law destroys U.S. leadership. Our author is an associate professor of political science at Carleton University. He states orders also established and maintained through the exercise of power by the leading state. The U.S. is the leading power and leadership is key. Next, on the economy flow, extend our pre-trial Justice Institute 2017 card. It costs our taxpayers nearly $140 billion a year to uphold our current system. My evidence citing a study from Maryland found that people arrested in the state from 2011 to 2015 paid more than $256 million in bail bond. This is happening in states all across the U.S. It means that people get trapped in sometimes their job, their housing, and get stuck in poverty because of having to pay bail bonds they can't afford. That's our coalition to end money bail bond 2019 evidence. And eliminating money bail will help not hurt our taxpayers. The only way to equalize the system is by eliminating money bail and reinvesting in our communities. By eliminating money bail, it'll be a necessary first step to help how we can look at the criminal justice system. It will help millions of people that are affected financially by paying bail use their money and resources towards helping their communities, schools, and have better jobs and extend our Greenham 2020 evidence. This will help us begin to solve economic inequality, which is key to political stability. Eliminating money bill will have a huge impact on communities that are affected the most by it. Then on the solvency flow, ending cash bill is the only way to solve. Extend our Doral 19 evidence. Ending cash bill is the only way to fix injustices of the money bail system since some judges will continue to detain people if the system is still in place. D.C. and Santa Clara County both show that courts can have individualized hearings for individuals to determine their outcome. These examples show people will attend their court date without having to pay a bond. Now it's the two and all. This will be the last negative speech. The order will be the federalism disadvantage, the rights advantage, the economy advantage, and then the solvency contention. Is everyone ready? Right. On the federalism disadvantage, both sides in this debate agree that economic decline causes war. So this round comes down to who best accesses this impact. Prefer our impact for three reasons. The first is the magnitude. The COVID-19 pandemic affects us all and has caused record unemployment and unprecedented economic events. This is a bigger internal link to the economy than economic inequality caused by cash bail. We've seen economic inequality for decades without an impact, but COVID-19 has caused real damage with shutdowns, hospitalization, and unemployment. And second is risk. Illinois is a great example that of the likelihood of risk that state flexibility preventing worse economic damage and having to close down even further. And third is time frame. The most pressing economic concern is the coronavirus pandemic. Real economic damage has happened in only a few months and on the line by line of the disadvantage. Our uniqueness evidence about state flexibility and federalism in the context of COVID is the most relevant and the newest. It assumes there are arguments about President Trump and governors. Second is link. The same power, police power, that is granted to the states by the 10th Amendment is what allows states to create their own bail laws 
and fight the pandemic. Cash bail reforms have been at the state level. Their own examples prove this is a state's issue. And they can't solve health disparities. Even if states aren't perfect, they're the best option. They need the flexibility. Kansas and New York are too dissimilar to have the same COVID policy. Even the state of Illinois, the different regions need different responses and measures. State governments are able to create these effective policies in real time, unlike the federal government's one size fits all. And now onto the rights advantage. Cash bail is not unconstitutional. Prefer our evidence because it cites the Supreme Court over activists and extend our Harvard Law Review evidence. The alternatives to cash bail are unconstitutional because they violate the Equal Protection Clause. This means the rule of law would be more negatively affected by eliminating cash bail in America because the Supreme Court has continuously proven it's constitutional and would disrupt federalism, a constitutional rights of the states. And on the impact, prefer our more recent evidence that U.S. hegemony does not prevent wars. It causes them. Professor Mearsheimer at UChicago has studied this for decades. He cites the U.S. involvement in the Middle East as a disrupting power that causes more instability. And on to the economy advantage. Even if pretrial detention is expensive on face, the alternative is not free. Pretrial risk assessment are expensive to set up. Taxpayers taking all the risk once the bail industry is ruined would be very costly. And extend our very 18 evidence. Empirical evidence from Maryland's reform shows that it would increase pretrial detention and the cost. With potentially more pretrial detention and removing state flexibility to fight COVID-19, eliminating cash bail would actually hurt the economy. They can't solve for economic inequality either. There are too many alternative causes, unequal access to jobs, healthcare, and education. Examples there, evidence sites. And on to the solvency contention. Even if the solvency claims about people showing up to trial are correct, that does not mean they solve the injustices in the system. Reform does mean a system must be in place to decide who is detained pre-trial and to prevent violent offenders from being released. The system is more flawed than the cash bail system. It uses proxies, accrued estimates, in place of race and income. Biases are baked into the data, according to our Carlisle 18 evidence. That is time. Yeah. Now for the last speech in the debate round, which is the second affirmative rebuttal. Everyone ready? Cool. So I'm going to start with an overview. Um, then I'm going to go on to the federalism dissent, then the rights economy, and then end with solvency. Cash bail is a national hot topic. Organizers across the country are fighting for an end to money bail system in addressing the inequalities within the criminal justice system. Eliminating this racist and classist system is the first step in creating meaningful reform. This is as much a human rights issue as it is an economic issue. We cannot stand by while people who have not been convicted of a crime spend days, weeks, or even months behind bars because they cannot afford to pay bond. Whatever happened to innocent until proven guilty? Prefer the app for three reasons. One, magnitude. COVID-19 is a new pandemic. Mass incarceration is a pandemic that has existed for decades. Cash bill perpetuates cycles of poverty and continuously targets poor black and brown people. As mass incarceration rates rise, the magnitude of a war due to economic inequality rises. And the fact that COVID has hit jails the hardest proves that states have not handled this properly. We saw for two instances of global war due to U.S. leadership decline and economic decline. On to time frame. Mass incarceration is the most pressing economic concern, especially in today's climate with taxpayers paying billions to incarcerate people pre-trial. This is a huge economic issue. And probability. There's a 100% probability of our impacts. You cannot talk about COVID-19 without talking about mass incarceration. Jails are national hotspots for the pandemic. When we eliminate money bail and pretrial detention, we are addre addressing one of the most notorious institutions that spreads the virus, federalism. Extend our Gawthorpe evidence, federalism is dead. We are seeing the disregard of local needs across the country in states like Georgia and Texas. We are seeing this in real time, prefer our argument and extend Skarinski. It cites two instances where the federal government was granted control over cash bail. We need a federal overhaul of the criminal justice system beginning with the elimination of cash bail. And we solve health disparities best. Mass incarceration is also a public health issue as much as it is a social and economic issue. States have proved that they cannot handle healthcare and criminal justice. On to right. Our Lockhart evidence proves that race plays a factor in determining bail and that Black and Latinx folks have been penalized at higher rates than white folks. 
Even if you don't buy the argument that money bail is unconstitutional, there is no doubt that money bail disproportionately affects black and brown communities, perpetuating cycles of poverty. And extend our own queer evidence, which says that pretrial detention because of money bail has negative outcomes. People are more likely to plead guilty even for crimes they did not commit. This is not okay. And those held pretrial are four times more likely to be sentenced to prison than those released pretrial. And Alexander Schmidt 18 evidence. He's a professor and expert on U.S. leadership. Countries around the world constantly criticize the U.S. for having the world's highest incarceration rate. If we don't uphold our systems of justice, this will cause more instability and lead to global war. On to econ. We are not advocating for pretrial risk assessments. Judges need to look at these on a case-by-case -case basis and cannot detain people because of money. Extend data for progress which says that many states have seen enormous success and the bills have funded national pretrial reporting programs, so better alternatives do exist. And extend Lockhart. Philadelphia proves that eliminating money bail has no effect on court appearances. Their assumption that eliminating cash bail would hurt the economy is false. Cash bail is an enormous burden on taxpayers. When eliminating this $14 billion cost, we are able to invest more in our communities. And solvency. Voting affirmative solves war because of economic decline and decline of U.S. leadership. These are the biggest impacts in this round. There is also a moral obligation to vote affirmative. Voting affirmative is the first step in addressing the issues that play our criminal justice system. Voting affirmative eliminates a system that disproportionately targets black and brown communities and saves taxpayers billions of dollars a year. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Um, Please practice thinking like a judge by filling out a ballot explaining who you think won this debate and why. Have a great day. Bye.